Hello and welcome to Canadian A Homestead where we practice simple intentional living in our off-grid A-frame and homestead in Northern Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob and today I'm filming inside of our shed because I'm warming up because uh, it is so cold outside and framing in the middle of winter is no walk in the park. <laughs> uh, today I want to talk to you all about that framing process and catch you up to speed with how it's been going over the last few weeks. So here it goes. Okay, so what I've been working on, it's, it feels tedious, but I know that it's gonna really help for the weekend. Um, I mentioned earlier that to build the first truss, we need to get to the wood that's at the bottom of this lift. And I think, I'm guessing it was all stacked according to the best way to ship it, not necessarily the best way to use the material when it's unloaded. And I guess that makes sense from their perspective. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually going through and I'm making piles of everything so that when, when we're building trusses, we'll know that we need a TD1, or two TD1s, two TD2s, and one TD3 to make a truss. And if I have the stacks, it'll be easy to just grab what we need, have all the hardware sitting there too, so we can just grab them one by one and just hit them together. Um, it takes work now, but if you do the work at the beginning, then hopefully make the process along the way uh, faster. Um, that's it, that's the hope anyway. I'm exhausted. I think I've said that a lot today. But it's, I mean, I'm feeling better. <laughs> um, this right here, this section, is the first part that needs to get built. It's the bottom part of each of the A's. And so I've got, well, there's still a few of the, of the main uprights. Let's bring over, but it's getting dark, so I thought I, thought I would make a video now. I'm slurring because it's so cold. Okay, so after day one, where you saw me laying out all of the material that came in the shipping containers, trying to get everything organized and figure out how it actually gets put together, we finally had everyone come up on a weekend. It was a Saturday when everyone uh, arrived where we wanted to start building. And that first day actually turned into just a lot of standing around trying to figure out what it was we were actually doing, trying to figure a layout of the slab and the A's. The goal over the course of the first weekend was to assemble all of the trusses and get them all standing up on the slab. And we found out pretty quickly that that was a very, very ambitious goal. What we did not realize was that on that first weekend, it wasn't going to be all go, go, go building stuff. But what we actually just needed was some headspace to think through the process of actually uh, putting together the trusses and more importantly, where are they going to go on the slab? And so on that very first day, we thought we needed a lot of bodies, but really all we needed was a few brains. <laughs> Our engineer friend who had come up on that very first weekend, he helped us to do a three, four, five triangle to make sure that that first corner would meet at 90 degrees and uh, figure out the, the total length of the slab itself so that as we place that first truss, that when we reach the end of the of the, the slab, that last truss would also end in the right spot so we'd still have room to build the gable ends on the end of the, the building and have the proper overhangs on the slab. But first thing, the very next day, we were finally ready to lift up that very first A because simultaneously, while we were figuring out all the layout, we were also working on assembling that first truss system to make sure that we knew how it went together, taking our time slowly. So on the, the next morning, bright and early, uh, we were there and we stood up that very first A, which felt so good. And that day we were able to lift up, like build, and then lift up three additional trusses. But look at that thing. Oh, it was a lot of work, but we got one up. And now we can go, go, go. <laughs>
so from Friday when we actually when I actually opened up the kit until Sunday, we had we had four of the trusses assembled and lifted up into place on the slab, bolted down and braced against one another, which equaled about one third of all of the trusses in our kit. After those first four trusses were lifted up, it was time to just do some bracing. And so we just used some of the strapping that came with the kit to just temporarily brace it, knowing that we would have to come back uh, in a, well, the, the next couple of days to actually put the blocking between all the trusses to support them. Um, up at the peak, it was starting to get a little bit windy and the trusses were starting to sway a little bit, which made me really, really nervous. Uh, but there was no way I was gonna climb the 26 and a half feet or whatever it is to the peak to put the bracing in there. So we just temporarily put some uh, strapping in there. And then I had a friend come up uh, th for the rest of the week and he and I worked together to put all the blocking in those first, uh, between all those uh, first four trusses that we'd stood up. Well, what a beautiful way to end the day. <laughs> Giannis and I were just finishing what the plans call uh, truss rods. Uh, we've been calling it blocking between each of the different trusses. And we're just up at the at the peak of the house and the snow started coming down. Like, <laughs> you got a little snowman on top of your head. <laughs> but it was beautiful and terrifying and just like the perfect combination of do-it-yourself um, construction. <laughs> but anyway, for those four trusses, we now have it blocked in this morning before we started doing the blocking. It was a little bit too rickety for me, like, like it, would, like the, at the top, it would sway if I leaned on it. And now, like, I can hear that it's shifting. But if you stomp in your house, it'll feel like that too. And there's no sheathing on this, so I feel much, much better about that progress now. Um, we were kind of hoping that we'd be able to build a few trusses today, so that we could. Um, be ready tomorrow to like lift a bunch. I got two other guys who were able to come help. So we were hoping, yeah, that we'd be a little bit farther along. However, it was, I think the thermometer said negative 10, maybe negative eight today, but it said it feels like negative 14. And it felt cold. And now with the snow starting to instantly just like gloves are cold or gl gloves get wet and then your hands just get that much colder. But anyway, we finished the blocking. I feel great about it. Um, it was, it was interesting, like I, I've always been okay with heights, but there was a few moments up there where I just switched from like standing to like a, a squat or to like sitting. And it was those transitions where I'm like, I have my drill, I have my hammer. It just, it didn't feel super comfortable yet. And uh, anyway, we got it done. I'm thankful for that. We're uh, we're hoping today to build seven trusses and stand them. Tall order, yes. Got two other buddies, buddies coming. But I, you know, we'll, we'll, I think we're just gonna build it, stack, and just stack them on top of each other. And then once they're all constructed, stand them up one by one. We're gonna skip the next two in line. And the reason why we're doing that is because we've been trying to figure out exactly what we're gonna do. But after this last truss that we raised, the one right here is a uh, dormer on this side of the house. So there isn't, uh, like the, the truss doesn't extend all the way to the ground. There's a beam that goes from this truss to the one that's after it. The problem is that the one that's after it, it is a dormer on the other side of the building. So that one has a beam that extends from this next one we're supposed to do to the following one. And so essentially there's, there's gonna be two trusses here that both require each other in order to to be standing and so we've been wasting not wasting we've been thinking a lot about how we're going to do it and i think we're just going to skip them for now i will build a temporary wall uh, for both sides and i'll just i think i'm just going to build the trusses standing rather than on the ground and lifting them up um, so anyway today hopefully we can get um hopefully we can get the seven other trusses built what do you hear toby Hopefully we can get the other seven trusses built and stood so that we can, uh... dogs, am I right? Hopefully it'll go well today. Toby, you're ruining the video. He's literally doing his job. So anyway, 
I'm gonna set up the time lapse now and away we go. It's officially like nighttime. I think, yeah, sun, sun went down a few hours ago. Um, we got three lifted and from now, from now on, the telehandler can just hold them in place. And so that last one is just sitting on the telehandler for right now. Um, that makes me feel really good. I'm really thankful for the guys who gave me a hand today and for Giannis being here this last like three days. It's been huge. From now on, I can try to assemble those trusses, use the telehandler, hold them in place if I can't find someone to, to come around. So I feel like we're in a good place right now. Uh, I'm gonna help Giannis get packed up cause he's got, you know, a four and a half, five hour drive tonight. So I wanna get him packed up so we can get out of here. By the end of that weekend, we had those three trusses standing up, braced with the original four, and we're feeling pretty good about that progress. <sighs> well, things are looking good and things are coming along slowly, but surely. Uh, there's just there's so many intricacies to this build and it's it's slightly different than the the, the minimal framing that I've done uh, before uh, where I'm used to like uh, building a two by four wall 16 on center. This is a little bit different. It's a little more intricate than that. So I'm having to refer to the plans a whole lot. I can't just put my head down and work. It's every step of the way I'm looking at the plans. And so slowly but surely uh, things are coming along uh, fine. Um, we have that those two sections of A's uh, stood up and then I still have the whole front section of the house to do as well as the two dormers. I have to figure out how I'm going to support the beams and stuff and I gotta gotta wrap my mind around that a little bit and uh, at, at this point we've called in so many favors and I've had so many friends come and give us help but it looks like for the next few weeks I'm solo and so please pray for me as we continue this build um, slowly but surely one screw at a time uh, we are building our very own home uh, so thank you very much for tuning in to Canadian A Homestead Hope to see you very soon.